Right. As the international world, as the world marks the International Day of the Disappeared, nearly 44,000 people across Africa are registered as missing with the International Committee of the Red Cross, ICRC, at a time when restrictions put in place to curb COVID-19 create new challenges in searching for missing people. 45% of the cases were children at the time they went missing. Nigeria, Ethiopia, South Sudan, Somalia, Libya, the Democratic Republic of Congo, and Cameroon may make up to 82% of the ICRC's missing case load in Africa. The highest among them is Nigeria, which is at nearly 23,000 people. And it is the largest ICRC's largest case load of missing people in the continent, driven almost entirely by the conflict in the northeast of the country. All seven countries have seen a rise in the number of people registered with the ICRC as missing in the first half of 2020. Joining us now is Aliyu Dawabe, Public Relations Officer with the International Committee of the Red Cross to make sense of this figure and data. Thank you for joining us, sir. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. Good morning. Good morning. Now, 20,000 people alone missing in the northeast of Nigeria. This is very high. Uh, which states account for the highest and are missing persons in conflict areas ever found or reunited with their families? Uh, thank you very much for this question. Um, if you talk about missing people in Nigeria, 90% uh, of the people missing are from the northeast of Nigeria. Not is uh, for us means uh, places where the armed conflict is going on for more than 10 years now. So 90% uh, of the people that are missing, that we are talking about 23,000 people missing, uh, is coming from this area. So the conflict has been lingering for a long period. And it's if you can see, it's surrounding the Lake Chad region, where about four countries or four countries uh, are, are connected together. So it's easy for people to jump over to one country and then for the other family members to jump over to the other country. So uh, perhaps uh, this is one of the reasons why we had a lot of uh, uh, missing cases in the northeast of Nigeria. The remaining 10 10% uh, is in other sit uh, situations of violence in the north central states and other parts of Nigeria. But principally is in the northeast of Nigeria. Hmm. Ali, this is not uh, good news at all, if you put it in that way. Women and children account for the highest of these numbers. Uh, let's talk a bit more also about missing children who, apart from conflicts, uh, children are often kidnapped. Some of them are sold to use as helps or sex slaves across Africa and across you know, uh, different parts of the world. How has the ICRC handled such cases, if I may ask you? Okay, for uh, the ICRC's mandate is actually on armed conflict and violence. So our principal target is to assist people who are separated during armed conflict and violence. Uh, there are so many other reasons for, 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 for people missing. Uh, but of course, this is a violation of the international humanitarian law, uh, which is not acceptable uh, for children to be uh, trafficked, for children to be sold out. Uh, this is actually a violation of the international humanitarian law, uh, which says that uh, children should not be a target in, in terms of armed conflict. Women, uh, aged people are not supposed to be targeted, hospitals and the rest of them. This does not only stop uh, in relation to the international humanitarian law, like we always say, but it's also relevant in the Islamic law. Uh, in, in Islam, the Prophet of Islam, Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam, says that uh, women, children, uh, aged are not supposed to be targeted. Uh, even hospitals, schools, public places are not supposed to be targeted. Uh, economic trees are also not to be. So if you look at this, uh, the broader sense, uh, not only in terms of inter uh, international humanitarian law, like we always discuss, but also Islamic law. Uh, this is uh, in relation to this. Uh, you would see that uh, uh, populations like these civilian populations are not supposed to be targeted. So uh, this is actually a violation of the international humanitarian law, and also uh, Islamic. Mm -hmm. During this time of COVID-19, the pandemic has given you know challenges to several spheres of our lives. You know, how has this 
impacted particularly on your work as ICRC? Okay, the pandemic is one of the key things that has affected not only our activities, but everybody's activities in the world. Uh, so uh, what we have done is merely to adapt to the situation that we are in. We have COVID-19, we have guidelines uh, by the government authorities, the ministries of health and NCDC, for example. Uh, so we try to adapt to this situation. Of course, uh, in, in the northeast of Nigeria, where you have uh, most of our activities, we used to have uh, thousands of people put together. But with social distancing, this has affected our activities. We have to, like I said, adapt to the situation to reduce the number of people, which means uh, an activity that we are supposed to do for a week is not going to run for two or even three weeks. Uh, so this is something that we are really facing. Uh, also, uh, uh, people uh, like have, having to wear mask and social distance. I mean, uh, hand hand washing and so on and so. On. So you need to provide uh, clean water, uh, not just for drinking now, but for hand washing and also hygiene uh, activities in 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 camps and so on and so forth. Mm. Also, it has affected our activities because you find uh, social distancing has helped because a lot of uh, people. Uh, instead of working in offices now, work from home. So this working from home has limited the face-to-face the, the -face interactions and so on and so forth. One of the key things I would have to mention, uh, how this affected our activity in terms of uh, reuniting families that are affected by violence is because of the restrictions. If you could remember, uh, in the past, you have a lot of restrictions uh, on, on interstate travels. Uh, this not only stopped at interstate travel, even inter uh, country travels. So it was a lot of uh, challenge to us to see how we can uh, look for families that are separated because we work very closely with the Nigerian Red Cross Society. Uh, their volunteers do a lot of work in trying to bicycle to areas that are very difficult uh, to, to, to access. Uh, they go to these places, they try to find out addresses of people missing and try to see how we can reunite them. So this uh, is one of the challenge that we have faced in terms of COVID-19 right. uh, and so on and so forth. Now, for the International Day for Disappeared Persons uh, this year, what does the ICRC seek to achieve? Yeah, you could see that uh, more than half of the missing is in Nigeria. Uh, the remaining figure that was given, 44,000 people, represents other African countries. Mm. So the aim is still to see how we would be able to reunite these people with their families, uh, how we would be able to work with other countries and other entities, uh, other organizations to see if it is possible for us to get a way of reuniting people with their loved ones. It's very, very painful for people to get separated for years without seeing one another. And uh, you could just feel the trauma in you uh, if you have not seen your child of five years uh, for, for more than five years again. So this is something that is very traumatizing to the communities that are affected, very, very uh, psychologically affecting them because when you don't see your father for years, then this is something that is really uh, very big on you. So our aim is mainly to see how we would be able to reunite these people as fast as possible, how we would be able to link up their loved ones uh, with their loved ones, if, if you like. Uh, and this is what we've been working around to do uh, in, in the northeast of Nigeria and across our other lecture uh, uh, countries, uh, Niger, Cameroon, Chad, uh, and of course uh, Nigeria, to see if we could work out. Because most of the separations uh, happened uh, across borders in the notice. You could see the, the location of the lecture region and the lecture crisis and how uh, it is evolving over the time. So this is something that we are hoping that we will be able to get a way of reuniting. For us, what we feel that is that, okay, maybe a few number of people know we do this activity. That's why they approach the ICRC to say, okay, we have a loved one that is missing, our child is missing, our father is missing. Could you help us reunite this, this, uh, us with, with our loved one? Mm. This is uh, what a lot of people do. But we still have a feeling that there are other thousands of people who perhaps don't know what we are doing. 
and uh, how we are doing it. So they have not approached us. So which means maybe the figure uh, is going to be much more than 23,000 because if people don't know what we are doing, they wouldn't approach us. But at least uh, we have people who have approached us and we are doing our best. Mm. That's a very crucial point that you have made there, that the numbers just might be more than what we do know. Now, the International Day of the Disappeared is also a day created to draw attention to the fate of individuals who are imprisoned at places and under really poor conditions, unknown to their relatives or even legal representatives. And in a country like Nigeria, this is quite common. You would agree to that. I'm wondering, how does ICRC, uh, ICRC help connect people who have, illegally, who have been illegally arrested with their families or even uh, lawyers? Okay, thank you very much. This is also a very important questions, uh, question that we, uh, I would love to, to, to address at this forum. Uh, the ICRC work in detention areas, but then uh, we don't go to detention areas to judge whether people were arrested legally or illegally. This is not our mandate. This is not what we do. What we do is just uh, to make sure that the, the living condition of the detainees is uh, of standard and also to see that the treatment of the detainees is also uh, according to the law of armed conflict uh, that is happening, the law of war, uh, in other words, the international humanitarian law. This is just what we do. And we also uh, work closely with the authorities to understand some of the challenges. Of course, sometimes the authorities get overwhelmed uh, in terms of uh, resources. So we try to see if there are challenges here and there. Uh, we work closely to see how we can also uh, play our role in trying to improve hygiene in prisons, in trying to improve health conditions in detention areas and so on and so forth. Not just uh, in permanent detention areas, but also in temporary detention areas. Uh, this is an activity we do. Uh, so uh, for us, it's uh, like the, 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 the detainees uh, or people who are detained should be able to, to, I mean, the families of these people should be able to know. Because if you are talking about people that are missing, uh, sometimes uh, in conflict situations, people get arrested and then the families don't know that they've been arrested. Maybe they approach us to say, okay, someone is missing and we don't know if he's uh, dead or alive. So please, could you help us look for this person? And then we flag on the, 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 our, our, our uh, uh, reunification and try to engage people to see how we can reunite these people. Uh, sometimes it's good for uh, detainees, detention authorities to understand that families of people who are detained, they have the right to know that uh, the, 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 the detainees are being detained. They don't have to like, uh, I mean, the families have the right to know where the, the, the detainees are, the detained people are, and the detained people should also uh, inform the families if they have any way. So the ICRC, what we do sometimes is just to try to liaise uh, with uh, families of detained people to tell them, okay, your, your husband or your wife is alive, but he's in, in detention. This is one of the key activities we do. Mm. All right. I mean, what is not clearly known to us is the number of persons who are missing in its entirety on the background, on the basis of what you had said. Not so many people are coming, reaching out to you to say, look, we are looking for our loved ones. That is what is unclear to us. But what is clear to us is that certainly there are people who are looking for their loved ones who are missing. I'm just wondering, what message do you have for families still looking for missing loved ones at this time? The families who are looking for their loved ones, we understand clearly the trauma they are passing through. We understand their mindset because they have lost their loved ones for a very long period or even a short period. We could understand the challenge they are facing, the trauma and the psychological uh, stress they are passing through because they have lost their loved ones. We have them in our minds. We remember them very well. And this is a day that we put aside to remember them and to tell them that they are we are doing our best to, to, to see how we can support, and uh, inshallah, we would be able to, to get to the, to the, to the to, 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 I mean, to, to reunite them, inshallah. All right. Thank you so very much. Ali Udaobe, Public Relations Officer of the International Committee of the Red Cross. Do stay, keep safe out there. Thank you.
Moving on, authorities of heads of state and government of the Economic Community of West African State ECOWAS has told the new military junta in Mali it has just one year to return the country back to a civilian rule. This was one of the decisions arrived by the ECOWAS authority at the end of its second virtual extraordinary session on the socio-political situation in Mali. Speaking during the session, President Muhammad Buhari emphasized the need for the country to return to democracy, warning that Mali could not afford to stand alone, charging the junta to be realistic by setting acceptable timetable for a return of the democratic rule. The president also noted that the briefings so far received from the ECOWAS special envoy, former president Goodluck Jonathan, indicated the regional bodies' engagements with the new military leadership in Mali that they were yet to achieve the desired results in several key areas. Among declarations of the summit adopted by ECOWAS leaders were that the transition government in Mali must be led by civilians and that the return to constitutional order should be concluded within 12 months. Malian military was also encouraged to focus on securing the country uh, at the moment. Still on Mali's situation, opposition leaders said on Friday they were disappointed by the conditions imposed by the Economic Community of West African State, ECOWAS heads of state, at an extraordinary meeting on how to transfer power from a military junta to a civilian government. The opposition leaders said it was up to the people of Mali to decide who would lead the transitional government and when they should hold elections. They spoke during a ceremony in the capital, Bamako, that paid tribute to the protesters killed in weeks of demonstrations last month that eventually led to the deposing of President Ibrahim Boubacar Keita. ECOWAS told the military, uh, Janta, which seized control on August the 18th, that it must transfer power to a civilian-led transitional government immediately and hold elections within a year. The bloc's chairman said in exchange that the ECOWAS uh, committed to gradually lift sanctions as the coup leaders complied with its demands. A member of the opposition coalition M5 RFP and former presidential candidate Professor Clement Dembele said ECOWAS needed to revise its position. On Saturday, the junta will be holding marathon talks and consultations with all the stakeholders at a conference center in Bamako to discuss the ECOWAS lists of demands. Thank you.